Hello, so today we're going to be talking about stress. I don't know whereabouts you are in the world right now, but here in England, if I look outside, it is rainy, grey, windy, cold, and just overall pretty miserable. And I find that this weather really does affect my mood. And I think this is common amongst a lot of us to not feel 100% when it comes into the winter. So I was inspired to make this video because a lot of us experience these winter blues, or if it gets more serious, seasonal affective disorder or SAD and we feel symptoms of stress, anxiety and depression coming up a lot more easily in the colder months because the days are shorter, it's a lot darker and we just don't feel 100%. So I really wanted to make this video to help those of you who go through this to give you my personal tips that I use during the winter to feel my best. So this video is in collaboration with Holland & Barrett. They're one of my all time favorite shops and I'm so happy to be making this video with them. They are basically my one stop shop for all things health related and I wanna recommend you guys the products that I use in particular to aid with stress and anxiety and just overall well-being. So there are many old wise tales out there that you may or may not have heard of that are said to ease stress and anxiety. So things like taking a paper bag out with you when you leave the house in case you have a panic attack, snapping an elastic band against your wrist to manage anxiety. I remember having a stress ball when I was younger to sort of alleviate the stress during exam time. Even things like sniffing oranges is said to calm you down and blowing up a balloon is said to lower your heart rate. So these things, while they may be a good quick fix, they don't target the real problem. Now I wanna give you tips that you can use that will help you over time target the actual problem and overall lead a healthier lifestyle. So they're natural, effective, and they're things that I use day to day to aid stress and anxiety. So without further ado, let's get into the top tips. So the first thing is vitamin D, and I think this is something that's often overlooked, but is a huge reason why so many of us feel low during the winter. SAD is actually caused or worsened by vitamin D insufficiency, so it's really important that you're getting outside when it is sunny, or if you're unlucky like me and you live in England and you can go weeks without seeing the sun in the winter, then you really need to supplement a vitamin D tablet. I take this supplement, it is a vegan supplement for vitamin D and it's made from mushrooms. If you're really unsure and worried, go get tested to make sure that your levels are okay because it might be affecting you more than you realize. So this leads me on to nutrition and proper supplementation. It is so important to fuel your body with the right foods to make it feel its best. I eat a vegan diet, so I eat an array of fruits, vegetables, starches, legumes, nuts and seeds, and that means that I'm getting loads of nutrients and minerals from loads of different sources to make my body run to the best of its ability. And I also make sure to supplement effectively. So I use this B12 spray. It is my favorite. I've tried lots of different B12 supplements, but none of them are as good as this one. I like it because it's a sublingual spray, which is more effective than a tablet because it goes into your bloodstream quicker. And also it's a lot more pleasant. And this one tastes really good. And I also supplement in the form of nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast, I'm sure you've had every vegan on the internet rave about for a good reason. It's so delicious. It's basically a great alternative to cheese and Parmesan cheese in particular for sprinkling on top of things like pasta or rice bowls and it's fortified with b12 so bonus there so i also like to use spirulina and this omega-3 supplement so spirulina is one of the best superfoods out there it's so jam-packed with nutrients and it is filled with all the essential amino acids that your body needs and then the omega-3 tablet is basically your vegan alternative to a cod liver oil or a fish oil but I think it's a lot better because instead of getting your omega-3s from a fish who's eaten some algae, you're getting it straight from the source. So you're getting it straight from the, the algae. It's so important to make sure your body is fueled with all the nutrients and vitamins that it needs in the winter. So the next thing is moving your body. Now, I do simply mean just moving. I'm not suggesting that you have to suddenly go on a marathon or lift ridiculously heavy weights in order to be stress-free. I just mean moving your body on a daily basis in terms of going for a walk, going on a bike ride, just working up a little bit of a sweat, even just 
putting on your favorite song and dancing in your living room for three minutes as that song plays, it can really, really help expel some of that stress and that pent up energy. I know that when I'm exercising a lot, I just feel, I just feel a lot better. I guess it's that day to day sweat and that grind and that working on yourself and taking care of yourself that really pays off in the long run. This leads me on to getting outside. Now, if you combine the last tip with this one, then you are onto an extremely effective stress busting activity. But, well, that was a tongue twister. But getting outside in general, just going for a short walk or just taking a step outside in nature is the most grounding and therapeutic experience. It's one of my favorite things to do and my go-to when I'm really feeling worked up. Literally sometimes if I'm feeling worked up about something, I will just step outdoors for a minute and take a breath because the sounds of nature, the sounds of the trees blowing, the sounds of birds, the smells, all of it just makes my stress levels just start to go down. So in Japan, there's something called forest bathing and they've done studies on people who regularly take walks in forest and noticed really dramatic changes in their immune markers and stress hormones. Goes to show how important it is and how effective nature can be on our mental well-being. Number five is meditation, mindfulness and gratefulness. This is something that a lot of people who deal with anxiety and depression use as a tool to aid their symptoms on a day-to-day -day basis. I have used this in the past and it has helped me tremendously to just set myself up for the day and feel so much more able to tackle stress. Just having that moment of calm and quiet in the morning or whatever time I can spare really has a huge impact on the rest of my day. So if you're new to meditation, then give this really simple and easy exercise a go. Find yourself somewhere really comfortable to sit, take a seat, sit upright and take a deep breath. Focus on something in the room that is natural. So for example, I could look at this plant. Ask yourself, what color is it? What textures can I see? Can I smell it? Is there anything moving? And think about the sights and the sounds around you. Try and tune out any thoughts you have. And if you have any thoughts go through your head, try and just let them pass. Don't get distracted by them and do this for a few minutes and you will notice that you will feel so much calmer afterwards. I really recommend you also try out gratefulness. This can be in the form of simply thinking about the things you're grateful for every day or writing them down. Lots of people like to make gratefulness journals where you keep a long list of all the things you're grateful for so you have it to look back on. It really helps to focus on the things that you have rather than the things that you lack when it comes to stress and anxiety. Often a lot of our stress and anxiety comes from focusing on things that we don't have rather than appreciating the things that we do. So the next thing is essential oils. I love to use essential oils alongside meditation and just at any times that I'm feeling stressed or anxious about something, I'll put it on my pulse points, so my wrists or my neck, or I like to use a spray bottle and put a few drops of essential oil in with some water and then I can spritz my pillow at night or even spritz my hair so I have that scent during the day. Another way that I like to use my essential oils is in my diffuser. It is a great way to just fill the room with a calming scent as I'm working in the day and also dropping a few into my bath at night time. My favorite is lavender. It is famed for its relaxation and soothing abilities but a couple others that I like are bergamot and rose. Number seven is writing lists and staying organized. This is definitely one of the most immediately effective things for me when I'm beginning to feel overwhelmed. I'm an overthinker, so often in my brain, I feel like I have 101 things I'm thinking about at once and it all gets in such a jumble. And then I start to feel stressed out. Now, when I sit down and then write those things I'm beginning to feel stressed about, I immediately feel better because it's organized, it's there on paper, I can tackle it easier, it's clearer. And often the things that I was worried about are so insignificant and really shouldn't have been worrying me so much. Number eight is herbal tea. 
Now, as a Brit, I absolutely love tea, but I don't actually drink caffeine, so I avoid the classic English breakfast teas and I opt for herbal teas. Caffeine is something you really want to avoid if you're dealing with anxiety and stress, simply because it's just going to make you feel worse. I've completely switched out caffeine for caffeine-free herbal teas like chamomile, peppermint, nighttime teas. There's honestly nothing I love more than settling in in bed with a big cup of herbal tea. It calms me down so much and I couldn't go a day without a big cup of herbal tea. And speaking of beds, there is nothing more soothing and relaxing than snuggling up and having a long night's sleep. I think that in the winter it's quite normal for you to feel like you need more sleep. I know that I do. I think it's the cold weather and the temptation of the duvet. I just want to get in it and wrap myself up. I love taking naps and it's actually really good for you. Just like charging your phone battery, you need to get that well-earned rest to recharge and feel good for the next day. And finally, the most tried and true of them all is talking. Do not feel ashamed to be stressed out or to be feeling it right now. We all are and you'll be surprised that just simply talking to somebody for five to ten minutes about the stresses that you're going through, how much that will make you feel better. I, as you can probably tell, love to talk and it immediately de-stresses when I verbalise them. So many of us don't communicate our feelings and so many of us are going through the same thing. So pick up the phone, talk to your friend about what you're going through and they might be going through something similar. And if you're really going through it, there is no shame in seeking professional help and getting counselling for what you're going through. There is no reason for you to go through depression and anxiety alone. There is support out there and there is help out there. So go speak with somebody, go talk to your doctor and seek the help that you need. Just remember to take care of yourself. You are so important and there's no way that you can take care of others if you aren't taking care of yourself first. If you use any of these tips, then let me know by sharing it on social media with the hashtag winterwise and making sure to tag me and Holland and Barrett. And let me know in the comments down below any other tips that you use and things that you do in the winter to stay calm and relaxed and to stop yourself from feeling stressed. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a big thumbs up and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.